Did you know that every time you breathe, someone new is born on Earth? Just imagine how many people are born during boxing matches. Nothing like a three-piece combo of crime babies. But for real though, today's story surrounds life, death, and understanding where we, humanity, came from under the Shinto land. Shinto is one of the oldest Japanese religions, and it places a heavy emphasis on Japanese land and its relation to humanity. It surrounds the concept of life and death itself, which is everywhere when you consider trees, plants, and other creatures who live with us on this rock, like dogs. And according to the Shinto religion, the story of how we, humanity, and Earth came to be is as follows. In the very beginning, there was an egg, sorry chickens, and the egg split in two, with the softer material becoming heaven, while the rougher material formed what we know as Earth. Between the split came three deities known as Takuma no Para, Aminomi Naka no Sumi no Kami, and Kami Musubi no Kami, but they didn't have physical forms. This detail will come back in a bit. At this point, the land below resembled a soft, jellyfish-like drifting oil, which reed shoots grew out of, and there came more deities between heaven and Earth, producing a total of seven generations of gods. A generation referring to pairs or spouses two deities, the seventh generation being the most important as they were Izanagi no Mikoto and Izanami no Mikoto, their names meaning invitation, as in he slash she who invites. Now I know what you're thinking, no, Izanami is not waifu material. I know she's hot in smite, but the reality of her appearance is much more menacing. Izanagi is not husband of material either, but damn if I don't want to jump on his bones right now. <clears throat> Let me explain. All the deities turn to Izanagi and Izanami, giving them the task to complete and solidify this drifting land. Izanagi and Izanami accepted the heavenly jeweled spear. Together, they stood on the floating bridge of heaven, and they stirred the matter like it was a boiling pot with said spear. When salty drops of water dripped from the tip, the first island, Onogoroshima, was born. The job wasn't done, however, so Izanagi and Izanami decided to reside on the island to give birth to more life. They created a beautiful palace to live in and constructed a heavenly pillar that ascended back to their birthplace. One day while they were relaxing, Izanagi asked his spouse, how has your body formed? If we recall, his curiosity comes from the fact that the deities from before them didn't have physical forms. Izanami answered that part of her body was underdeveloped, and she asked Izanagi how his body was formed, to which he replied, oh, I seem to have excess development in one area. I'm really slow when it comes to jokes, but it took an embarrassing amount of time for me to realize that when Izanagi said, No matter, we shall put my excess body part and your underdeveloped body part together and give birth to the land. He was referring to intercourse. He might as well have said, I shall insert my into your hoo-ha and I still said, oh, that's a wholesome hug. They came up with a small ritual where they walked around the pillar and met each other. Izanami greeted him first, saying, how a good lad. Izanagi followed up with, how a good maiden. But Izanagi thought the order of their greetings was wrong, saying, it isn't proper for the women to speak first. Gender roles, am I right? They ended up having intercourse but gave birth to what's referred to as a leech child, a deformed offspring they considered inadequate and that they sent away on a boat. Damn, that's messed up, dude. They proceeded to birth the island of Appa, but they also considered it as not their own. Izanagi and Izanami were confused about their failed conceptions, so they went to the deities in heaven and consulted them on how to properly have intercourse. The deities also said that it was incorrect for the woman to speak first. They returned to their palace and did the same pillar ritual, except Izanagi greeted her first, and then came oh so many children. 14 islands, which were the first part of the world, created and what we now refer to as Japan. Also 35 deities, the last of which, Kagutsuchi, the fire god, tortured Izanami in the birthing process, so much so that she got sick and died due to the burns. I uh, can't imagine that being pretty. Why? What I find particularly interesting about Izanami passing away and putting Izanagi through grief is how human it is. From the start of the story, there's been troubles with birthing and whatnot, but there hasn't been any death yet, only life and growth. This is the first time the concept of death is introduced in this folklore, Izanami having birthed so much finally came at a cost. A cost Izanagi couldn't cope with as he weeped by her side and murdered his own child responsible for her death. And Kagutsuchi, the fire god that killed Izanami, was so powerful that rock, thunder, and water gods were born from his death, leading to the creation of volcanoes and their eruption, which now symbolized a god's rage with a sword. To push this idea of human nature and gods further, Izanagi descended to Yomi, the land of the dead, to see if he could bring Izanami back to life. He just couldn't accept things as they were, much like us. It was really dark down there, but Izanagi eventually found her at the door of the underworld, where he claimed, we have unfinished business, there are more lands to make. Izanami, happy that her husband came for her, told him she wished he'd have come sooner since she had already eaten at the hearth of Yomi, something that prevented the dead from ever returning to the living. But she told him to wait as she went to negotiate with the gods of Yomi. She also said, please don't look at me, don't investigate, 
keep this area dark. Human nature is curious, and Izanagi's curiosity as shown from before shines through, quite literally. He used part of the comb in his hair and lit it on fire to reveal the truth, a central theme in Persona 4. Izanagi saw maggots devouring Izanami's horrible corpse and this terrified him, so he started to flee. Izanami, feeling shame and a betrayal of her wishes, sent the hags of Yomi to pursue after him, ugly creatures. As Izanagi fled, he undid a black vine holding his hair, and uh, this can't be right. Grapes were born from said vine? He tossed the grapes in the hags' way, and it slowed them down due to them wanting to eat. When they finished their grapes, they chased him again, and he used the comb from before to create bamboo shoots, which slowed them down to eat again. Izanami got more pissed off and sent eight thunder deities from her own body and a bunch of warriors to catch up to him. Izanagi arrived at the foot of the pass, which is the entrance back to his world, and where he found peaches, the fruit. He attacked the deities with peaches. Let me make this clear. They didn't stop to eat the peaches. He attacked them with it. Peaches! And he won! They left Izanagi alone. So next time you're in a street fight, just pull out a peach and you'll be fine. No, seriously, because Izanagi blessed the peaches, saying, Just as you have saved me in distress, when any mortal is in distress, you save them also. It's a little silly, but it's nice to think about, especially considering that peaches were used to dispel demons and evil spirits in China. Chinese influence was strong when this myth was conceptualized. Finally, Izanami chased him herself and he closed the entrance with a massive boulder. Izanami was naturally super mad and made the declaration that she would kill 1,000 of the population every single day. Izanagi responded that he'd give birth to 1,500 places which people will be born from each day. This is why every day many die and many more are born. Life and death cannot coexist without the other, and this is the theme we've seen throughout the story. But the fact that more people are born than die gives a slight undertone of hope when you disregard the context of limited resources in our world of course. Izanagi is supposed to have our backs. We all have the power of anime on our side. As long as we eat a peach every day, of course. Thanks for watching.